In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to extract values from a database and construct an HL7 message that can be sent on to a medical system. The first one is a basic patient extract that will be converted into an HL7 message. We'll then show you how to configure it so that you can constantly monitor a table for new updates. So first, let's take a look at the database and see what we've got. It's a very simple database. We've got a patient's table and I've selected the rows and you can see we've got a database ID for each of the patients, their first name, their last name and their date of birth. Those are the fields we're going to be using at the moment. So let's head over to HR7 Soup and we'll start by creating a receiver that will extract out the data from the database. Click the receivers tab, click new and that opens up the workflow designer screen and I'll give it an indication of what we're trying to do. In this example, we're going to send patients to HL7. And we're going to set where we're going to get the data from. And we're going to choose a database reader. And we'll call this first activity, get patients. Now we select what data source we're having. We're using SQL Server in this example, but you could use other databases. And then we just need to put in our connection string. There are some example connection strings that you could use for the data source and you just have to fill out the fields that are appropriate. I happen to have a connection string already for my SQL Azure database, so I'll just paste that in. Right, so now we need to give it a query to retrieve the patients from the database. And I'll just paste one in again. And we can see here it's a very simple query. We're just selecting from the patients table and we're extracting out the patient ID, the first name, the last name and their date of birth from the database. There is no criteria for this query at the moment. It's just an extract all data query. I then need to tell HL7 soup what fields I expect in the results. And in this case, I can just take it straight from the select statement and paste it in, in the results fields. Notice it automatically removed the square brackets for me. And this is a one-off process, so we're not going to be polling and we don't need to update the database once we're finished. So that's our extraction from the database. Now let's go and build up the message. We need to add another activity. So we've got a few options as to what we're going to do with that HR7 message. We could actually write it out as a file, send it off as HTTP message. But in this case, I'm going to do the common thing with HR7 and I'll send it off as a TCP message. So I need to set the address and port of that message. And we can figure out that we're setting an HR7 message. And now I just need to provide it a message template. And a message template is an example of what that message is going to look like. Now, hopefully you've already got one. It's much easier for you if you've already got an existing HR7 message that you know is going to work on the receiving system. However, if you don't, we can actually go across to HR7 Soup and we can use one of the many sample messages as the basis of our message. We could also create a new message, click Create New, we choose the type of message we're having, the event type, as we're sending it out patient data, it's maybe register a patient, more likely to be a A08, an updated patient information, or a A28, add a person information. It's probably going to depend on who you're sending it to for that. I'm just going to choose the first one and say OK. No matter what I choose, it's going to fill out all the fields available to me automatically as a blank message. Then it's up to me to cut that message down to just the fields I want. So in this case, I'm going to make it super simple and cut it down like that. And I could use that as my basic template. And I can expand some of the sections because I know I want the name. So I'm just going to expand that and it automatically puts in the sections for me. I'm just going to copy this and we're going to use it as the basis for our message. Another option I did have also was to right click here and just say insert a sample message. And it's given us a base one that might be kind of appropriate for what your needs are. It's got more of the message filled out already for us. And in reality, a lot of the message is just literal values. But I'm just going to paste this one in. And what we'll end up producing is a perhaps incomplete HL7 message. But I think this way it'll be easier for me to demonstrate to you exactly what needs to be done. So the message template is the message that's going to be sent on to our TCP receiver. And it's up to us now to populate those fields inside that HL7 message with the data that we extracted from the database. So there's a number of literal values in an HL7 message. They're likely just going to stay the same. And any value you type in here will be repeated on all instances. So I can adjust the literal values by just typing in. And so here we have the date of the message. We're going to have to update that for each message with the current date. So all I have to do is select it, right click and go insert variable. 
and then I can set it to the current date and time. And then I'm going to want to format that current date and time by right clicking and going format dates and number. And I'll set it to an HL7 date with seconds in it. And that makes sure it's in the date format required for HL7 messages. Then I've got the message control ID. That's normally an incrementing number per message. So I'm going to replace this one as well with the workflow instance ID. And that's just another one of the system variables. That's a number that will increment with each message that gets sent. Okay, so now let's populate the fields that we extracted from the database. And you can see here in our binding tree, we can already see the names of the fields that we added into the first activity. So all I have to do is drag those into the appropriate location. So I'll drag in the patient ID. And as we move the mouse over, it tells us what field we're looking on. I want to move it to the PID3, so I'll do that. And it adds that into the message. Same with the first name, it attaches to the given name. The last name will go into the family name and the birth date. And that's into the PID7. So great, that's our simple scenario and our very simple HL7 message built. So let's just go and test that out. I'm going to hit save and close. And there's our creative receiver. And we did configure that HR7 message to be sent to port 2222. So I'm just going to quickly create another receiver that's going to be listening on port 222 for that message. So I just create a new receiver. The defaults are fine. It's already listening on port 22222. So I'm just going to hit save and close. That's actually all I need from that workflow. Its only responsibility is to receive the messages once they've been created. So we don't get any errors. So I'm just going to create that as an integration. A bit more about that shortly, but that'll just make sure it's always running. Okay, let's try it out. So we'll choose our send patients to HR7 and we will hit start receiving. Now that will query the database and can create those messages. Let's click back into the workflow and take a look what's happened. I can have a look at the message logs and we can see that nine messages have been sent from the database. There's just a small database table in this case. Okay, I'll go to the top message. We can expand that out and we can see it's picked them up. And there's the results from the database query. And each row from the record set has been returned as an individual message. It has now created an HR7 message from the data in the database. And we can see it's generated a state and it's put in the message control ID. That's the incrementing number that's going to be unique with each message. And there's our patient's ID, name and date of birth. Now, just quickly, I've noticed one fault that I've got in this workflow. That's not the HR7 format of dates for date of birth. So I know what I've done wrong. I just need to go back to the HR7 message. And when I was putting in that birth date, I just need to right click and go format dates and numbers and select the HR7 date. And that puts it into the appropriate format. So I hit save now and I head back to HR7 soup and start receiving again. Then I'll head back for another look at the logs. And we'll see now it's in the correct date format. Great. So that's the first scenario. So now let's move on to our second scenario where we're going to check the database for new or updated messages. So I'll bring the database back up and we'll notice that I've got a change flag on this table. There are a number of ways that we can extract out new and updated records. One is with a change flag or you could do it by date sort of up to your database. On this particular one, we've got the change flag field available. With this database, I happen to have a trigger ready and waiting that I can enable. And this is a simple trigger. All it's gonna do is set the change flag to two if the patient is updated, and it's gonna set the change flag to one if a new patient is inserted. And we can use that in our queries criteria to select where the change flag is greater than zero. So that will return all patients with a non-zero changed flag. We'll then set this to continuously poll the database looking for those changes and we'll do it every 10 seconds and we'll tell it to update the database afterwards. Right, so I insert this query, update the patient table. We're going to set the change flag to zero where the patient ID is the patient ID parameter and we're just going to populate the patient ID parameter field. So we got that out of the database when we first queried it. I can now just go to the bindings and drag that patient ID back into here. So we'll return that, and then it's going to use the same ID of the record that we're currently executing over, and we're going to update that field that we've already processed. So I'm going to save and close our workflow. 
So because this workflow is now monitoring the database, we are going to want it to be always running. So I'm going to take advantage of integration host for that, and I'm going to promote it to an integration. And then let's head over to the integrations tab, and we can take a look at it. Okay, so it's processed no records so far, and that's because we've had no changes or updates to the database since we started it. So I'm going to head over to the database, and I'm going to edit the table. And then if I update one of the records, and click off, we've now updated the database. It sets the change flag to 2 on the fly for me because of my trigger. And then I head back to HL7Soup, and we can see it's now picked up that record. If I click here and look at the logs, we can see that it has retrieved that record from the database. And there's the HL7 message that it is sent on. And you'll notice now Bob is the first name. And because it's running an integration host, this will always monitor and pick up the data in almost real time, processing it and sending it off to another system. As always, if these videos have helped, why not return the flavor, give us a like, or consider subscribing to our channel. If you've got any questions, feel free to log them on the HL7Soup website.